This is the Behringer, the base BDI 21. This has been out for quite a few years now. Um, it's sort of a copy of the uh, the Tech 21 Sans Amp preamp, basically. Uh, this is the cheaper version. <laughs> I don't know if there's, I've never played with the, the Sans Amp preamp, um, so I don't really know, but from what I've found out on the internet, they are fairly similar. This is modelled on that, basically it's a copy. Uh, the difference being the Sans Amp is in a metal box, quite sturdy. This is all plastic. Having said that, it is very, very durable. You could probably throw this about quite a bit. I've had this for a while. Um, as I say, it's been out for a long, long time. Uh, you can still pick these up now, brand new. For Toman are doing them for 23 euros. Amazon, you can get them on Amazon, all sorts of places. The Behringer are a company that um, sort of, I wouldn't say rip off other companies, but do your research on the internet. You'll find out what Behringer do. But I'm quite happy that they do because I've got quite I've got some other Behringer stuff. I've got a Behringer mixing desk. I'm more than happy with that. And I've been more than happy with this. Uh, I've been I have used this as just a DI box straight into a, a house PA system, but then I have been I've got my other pedal for that as well. There's the zoom pedal, which is another video, which I'll link that video up here. Now, when you get this, it's uh it comes with a, a list of presets so you can turn your knobs. Now you've got presence, drive, treble, bass, level, and blend. I'll go through in, later on in the video what each one does. Obviously the drive, treble, bass, level, self-explanatory. You've got a ground lift switch in the middle, and you've got on and off switch. Now, it runs on either uh, a nine volt battery in the back or it's DC input, not included. Um, and it will only be powered up when you put an input into it. So don't ever leave it plugged in because if you're running on battery, that'll be flat next time you need to use it. So just unplug it. It's got input, output, and a balanced DI out, which I use the balanced DI out straight into the desk for these purposes of demonstration. Um, so then you've got your button, switches it on and off, and a little light comes on when it's it's on. So in the instructions, it gives you some settings for different, uh, where to turn the knobs for different things. I'll show you that, and then we'll have a, a little audio clip uh, and see what it sounds like. Now, it is not an overdrive pedal, although it's got drive on it, it just gives it that sort of like that gritty, dirty edge to bit to try and sort of emulate a valve tone. If you give it too much, it I wouldn't say it sounds digital, but it you, you lose some of that organic sound. So you've got to be careful how much you you crank the drive up. But um, yeah, so for what it is and the price of it, it it is quite good. So we'll have a listen. I'll go through and just adjust some of the things. We'll have a listen to some audio clips. Um, as I've said in previous videos, I've not picked up the bass guitar properly for a long time. Um, I've just picked out a few songs that you might have heard of. Uh, and I'm playing the Bravewood P bass through this, straight into the desk, into Garage Band. Try to keep it as clean as possible on the uh, garage band so you'll actually hear what this is doing. So let's get to it. Fat tube. Presence to the middle. Drive to the middle. Treble to the middle. Bass. Blend all the way around.
So I'll just quickly go through what these knobs and dials do. Uh, the first one is drive. That's going to be like your gain, your overdrive, which you would get on an amp. Obviously make, gives it that sort of gritty sound. Then you've got your treble, that's going to affect your high frequencies. Then you've got your bass, which is going to affect your low frequencies. <laughs> Next one along is level. That controls the overall output of the pedal into whatever you're plugging it into. The presence control boosts the upper harmonic for like a, a, a smoother high end uh, and more attack. The blend, you would think, would blend like the dry signal of your guitar with the signal of the pedal. But oh no, not on this gadget. The blend actually um, emulates like the output section on a valve amp. Um, so you, it says in the, in the literature that comes with it that it's uh, sort of, if you imagine miking up a, a valve bass amp and it, that would be like the sound that you sort of get. We'll have a listen and see what, see what we think. So that is it for the Behringer Bass BDI-21, um, the V-Tone Bass Amp Modeler. 
I think you'll agree, for 23 euros, it is a bloody good bit of kit. Um, it's not something that I use very often anymore. I mean, the amp I've got has got tone slots, so I can I can send effects to the tone slots via my phone. You, you beam it through the pickup. Um, I've got my zoom pedal, which has got all the effects I could possibly ever need. Um, but if you just want a, like a clean tone, going straight into the mixing desk, uh, as like just a DI box, this is perfect. Um, really, really good bit of kit for the price. If you're on a budget and you need something like this to just shape your tone a little bit, or just as a DI box straight into a, a desk or a PA system, um, this is the thing to have basically, for, you know, it's, it's not the best thing out there, but bang for buck, I would really recommend it. You know, if, if, you're, if you're on a budget, I'll put a link to the Toman website where you can see this. They ship all over Europe. I'm not sure about the States, um, but you can find them on Amazon, places like that. For what it is, I would recommend it. Um, although it's plastic, it is very, very durable. And that's about all I can say about it, really. So, I hope you liked this video. Please click the thumbs up if you did, and we'll try and get this channel up and going and getting a bit of momentum. Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.